Uh, All right. Well, uh, let, let me just say a, a very, very brief introduction. It's a, okay. it's a pleasure to have uh, Helen Lee here from FSU, uh, uh, who's um, been working in the power electronics area you know, since her PhD came, uh, well, 2000. 2000, in, yeah. Uh, in uh, Tennessee, and uh, she's uh, lead some very big projects uh, in, uh, in the power electronics area, and uh, part of a fantastic collection for you guys. Fantastic to have you here to speak about your work. Okay. Both, you both know that you have activities at uh, FSU and uh, at okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Is this the right way? Uh, how to? You see at the bottom left that normal view, that little icon right next to Right to the left of it, just click that. Which one? Normal view. Norm oh, oh, okay, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm very glad to take this opportunity to show some work at uh, uh, CAPS uh, Center for Advanced Power System and also some of my work. And um, I'm a professor at ECE department, but at the same time, uh, I also work at the Center for Advanced Power System, we call the CAPS at FSU. The CAPS uh, was established in 2000 and a five million grant from ONR, but uh, we are uh, in a consortium, mm, FSU uh, leading this consortium. We call the ESRDC Electric Ship Research and Development Consortium. And uh, this center is uh, focused on research and education related to application of new technology in electric power system. And we have faculty and scientists from different areas, and I'm going to show you uh, um, next one. And uh, the center is organized and FSU uh, VP for research and also we are not uh, controlled by uh, college, and uh, it's like an affiliation uh, relationship. Um, when a member of ONR, Electric Ship R&D Consortium, uh, ESRDC, this is the main funding resource for the center. We have some good years and uh, bad years, and uh, for the good years, we received more than $8 million or $9 million per year, and uh, for the uh, Bad year and uh, five million dollars or three million dollars, and uh, recently our uh, current caps director retired, and uh, we will have new caps director join on the board uh, in July. And we also have the DoD cleared facility at a secret level. I know this is very rare in the university environment, but in order to conduct some research for ONR, so we uh, get this. The standard research areas including uh, superconducting, uh, thermal management, and power system design and management, uh, electric system for the management, power electronics converters, that uh, is my group, and energy conversion um, led by uh, Dr. Chris Edmonton is mainly on the machine and model drive, and uh, electrical power and uh, uh, energy management. So you can see that uh, Power system related research is the most important area uh, at the CAPS. Then we have uh, power electronics and uh, thermal and uh, superconducting. And we have four tenure track faculty and uh, seven uh, full time uh, research scientists and other uh, uh, staff and uh, students and uh, some uh, postdocs. You see here, the one very important thing about the CAPS is we have very, very good uh, testing facility. So we have the 44,000 square feet uh, laboratories and office and uh, located in uh, Innovation Park. I talked to Sean this morning because our college and uh, is shared by FAMU and FSU, so it's located in a neutral place is uh, Innovation Park, and we never have parking problems. Uh, 
And uh, a lot of funding we have received, over uh, $35 million is specialized. We have to use the to improve our uh, facility. So, for the main funding source is from the ESRDC or from ORMR and um, we also involved in, um, not involved, uh, uh, I think FSU uh, is leading the uh, uh, Sun Green project and, uh, and recently my group and um, I need a uh, electronics group become a, a one member of the DOE Next Generation, WBG Power Electronics Institute and this is uh, DOE gave $70 million and the team has the 50% cost sharing which is another $70 million. I think uh, NC uh, State and uh, contribute another $10 million. So that is um, $150 million institute. And uh, FSU is also uh, one team member of the Freedom ERC Center. And we also have some other small funding from different sources. For the CAPS uh, power hardware in the loop test the facility, we have a 5 megawatts uh, dyno uh, um, facility. So the most important thing here is we use RTDS, the real-time digital simulator, to control this power amplifier to generate a controllable AC voltage source for the power hardware in the loop uh, uh, related to the research. Here I just want to show you uh, several uh, uh, labs in the um, CAPS. One is uh, energy conversion and integration lab and uh, led by Dr. Chris Anderson. And uh, the main research is to do chill the control in the loop and uh, um, p uh, power hardware in the loop experiments and the research. And this is the cryogenic Oh, this is not cryogenic. This is alternative energy lab and led by a faculty from mechanical um, engineering department is uh, conducting research related to fuel cell and some other. This is a cryogenic a lab. Um, basically, they wanted to reduce the, the loss at the cryogenic um, temperature. The most of the funding resource is coming from ONR. They supported this. And uh, uh, this is my um, lab. And we have uh, two small parts. One is um, the small uh, smart grid lab. And we have this 22 kilowatt hour uh, lithium ion uh, energy storage uh, system. And we have, we have AC load. and. Um, power amplifier and the PV panel and uh, um, connected to this lab and all connected to the real-time digital simulator through a power amplifier. And this is uh, the power electronics uh, lab and we build um, uh, a solid state transformer and uh, a PV converter and the regenerative energy, uh, regenerative uh, model drive. We build hardware. And uh, this is the low bay. This is a power amplifier. Uh, I think it's a 20 kilowatt um, AC to AC inverter. And this is the uh, 20 horsepower dyno. And this is a 5 horsepower dyno. Actually, this uh, lab, uh, um, Dave Cuddy's, uh, led by Dave Cuddy's, this is uh, his lab. And this is a switch gear room. And uh, recently, we uh, uh, started to build a media voltage DC lab. A media voltage DC research uh, is very, very important uh, on our and they put a lot of efforts and uh, focus on the media voltage DC. And uh, 
This is high bay and the control room. And this is a, a simulator room. The most valuable room in CAPS, we have 14 rack uh, RTDS, the real-time digital simulator, in the, introduced by one of our CAPS director, uh, Dr. Peter McLaurin. And uh, he is from the, uh, Manitoba, University of Manitoba. And uh, his area is in the protection relay. And uh, he brings in the uh, RTDS to uh, CAPS. So, made the, um, our that the five megawatt data and all the other uh, um, facility all controlled by RTDS. This is uh, fantastic. Um, I think all the other university like uh, NCSU, uh, uh, like UTK, they have this new ERC center and a lot of other universities, they also see this, uh, how important RTDS is. So they all uh, purchase their own. Uh, but they maybe only two rack or, or three rack, and the other university have the 14 rack and uh, tremendous capability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even power electronics, this is mainly for power system related research, but even power electronics, we also take advantage of RDDS. Uh, we can also use this in our research. So RTDS. The uh, real-time digital simulator. And, and how, roughly how much does that cost to buy? Oh, that is, that is very expensive. And uh, when we first uh, received our uh, seed funding from ONR, that the $5 million dollars uh, to establish this uh, uh, CAPS uh, building, most of that uh, money and uh, go to uh, purchase RTDS. Okay. Yeah. So that's why the other university, um, they only just purchase a two rack and uh, maybe three rack. I think ABB, the, the research and develop division at Raleigh, they also just uh, uh, purchased their own two rack RDDS. But when they simulate the uh, large scale power system, they come to us. So why caps and uh, is keep on growing? Because we have this kind of capability of the industry and some other uh, um, academic. Uh, when they need this uh, uh, function, they come to us. That is also why we squeeze or not squeeze, we become uh, one member of the Freedom ERC Center. This is also, they just uh, look at our role. Uh, it's our starting point. Okay. I think this is pretty much, there's a brief introduction of the CAPS and welcome all of you. Um, come down to uh, FSU CAPS and we can see uh, more yeah, exciting things there. I may need help, okay, to close this. How to close this? And uh, open my stuff. The red button there will pull that. Okay. And then over here is the uh, presentation. Yeah. And then uh, down here is next. Okay. Yeah, I never use Apple. <laughs> Okay, good. Okay, cool. Today I'm going to talk about uh, um, some current going projects uh, in my group. Um, I hope I'm not going to make this uh, boring because the uh, power, especially power electronics, uh, people always think is uh, boring. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm going to talk about how to develop uh, advanced media voltage bidirectional DC to DC converter to be applied in the future electric energy delivery and management system, we define as a freedom system, um, as a solid state transformer to replace the traditional line frequency transformer. to reduce the volume and the weight. And uh, this is a widely accepted configuration of the solid state transformer. It uh, consists of three conversion uh, stage, AC to DC rectifier, media voltage, DC to DC converter, and the DC to AC inverter. Well, you can see that the uh, DC to DC converter play a key role to provide high frequency isolation 
and the high efficiency and the high power density for the whole SST. Okay. This slide shows one possible structure of a future freedom uh, system. And besides reduce the weight and uh, uh, size, the SST can also enable freedom system to integrate the distributed renewable energy source and storage with existing power grid and also realize intelligent energy management. Actually, you can see this as a nano grid. And uh, SST can be as an energy control center to connect the nano grid to form a microgrid or smart grid. So in this structure, each nanogrid can be treated or can be seen by the utility grid as a single electronic load and source. So dynamically independent of the utility grid but dispatchable by the utility operator. The nanogrid concept now becomes also popular and uh, hot. So SST can play some role in that nanograde control as well. But for our research project, we focused on the, um, developing the DC to DC conversion stage. The main goal is to improve the high efficiency and high power density. For the intelligent power management control um, by SST, there's some other uh, team uh, talking uh, that. So we made this Basically, we are going to make this hardware, okay, and that you have high efficiency and high power density. And at the same time, also meet some other requirements, like bidirectional power flow control and high frequency transform isolation and the media voltage and high power capability, as well as fault tolerance. And uh, for the, to improve the efficiency and the power density, that's not uh, a, a problem for low voltage DC to DC converter. But uh, it becomes a very challenging task for media voltage uh, application. There are two ways. One way is to use a new semiconductor device, like the very popular one, the wideband uh, gap device. Um, another uh, approach is to use the traditional silicon uh, semiconductor device to take advantage of a silicon uh, device at lower voltage, the lower on resistance and uh, um, high switching capability to take uh, advantage of those. And it, but with an improved or, or new converter topology to achieve the same goal. And um, Today's project, I mean today's prese uh, presentation, we talk about a project that is focused on this approach. We also have some other projects uh, focused on this approach. Well, one way to use the lower voltage silicon uh, device for media voltage application is to use multi-level DC to DC converters. However, for those converters, for those more than three level uh, converters, the system reliability cannot be guaranteed because of a large number of the diode and uh, large number of the flying capacitors. So the DC to DC converters connected uh, with ISOP connection what is ISOP is input the series and output the parallel. With this con uh, configuration, provides a most uh, promising solution because of these advantages. Especially, we have enhanced the reliability by introducing desired level of redundancy and uh, can reduce manufacturing cost and the time and also to achieve possible high efficiency and high power density. Well, different uh, DC to DC converter topology has been uh, uh, reported to, for this ISOP configuration. Uh, here we have the phase shift for bridge converter. The secondary side, uh, we have diode. 
and the two transistor forward converter, secondary side is diode, and the push pull converter. This is what the pure power electronics guy is. Okay. However, all these topology reported cannot meet the requirement, cannot apply it for the media voltage DC to DC converter uh, in the solid state transformer. Why? Because most of them, they don't have bidirectional power flow capability. Because the secondary side, you can see there's a diode. Okay, so unidirection power flow. And also, they have large switching loss due to the hard switching operation. So our project is to develop a media voltage by directional DC to DC converter applied in a 20 kVA single phase ACST. And for the entire DC to DC converter, the input voltage is 12 kV, is 12 kV, and output voltage is 400 volts. And the switching frequency um, is 50 kilohertz for the power density uh, 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 purpose. So for each individual uh, module, we define the, the, or we select the input voltage is 500 volts, and output voltage is 400 volts, and the rated power is 1 kilowatt. Why we choose the input voltage is 500 volts, not 2,000, not uh, 5,000? Because to meet this switching frequency requirement, we have to use a silicon MOSFET. And, um, but for MOSFET, if we want uh, um, to take advantage is lower ohm resistance and the high switching capability, the voltage usually is less than the one kilovolt. When the voltage increased, we use IGBT, but IGBT cannot switch at the, uh, uh, more than 10 or 20 kilohertz. Otherwise, the switching loss and the connection loss increase, the whole efficiency of the converter decrease. So if each module is 500 volts inputs, so we will have 24 modules uh, together. So we build this uh, uh, hardware. Okay, and another thing is, since all the topology reported cannot meet this uh, media voltage application, so what are we going to do? We are going to use a phase shift DHB, dual hard bridge topology. We cannot use the uh, phase shift the full bridge that uh, we showed the output uh, we have diode and uh, uh, push pull and forward converter we cannot use that uh, topology we can only use this one why why we use dual hard bridge converter there are several reasons the first reason you can see the topology is very simple with a small number of the semiconductor device and the primary side two, secondary side two. And also the control is very simple as well. Now, we control the top switch and the bottom switch in a complementary way. And there's a phase shift angle between this primary side switch and the secondary side switch. So in this way, this topology can be simply modeled as the two AC voltage applied in the leakage inductance of transformer. The operation principle is very simple. So we derived our output equation in terms of phase shift angle and switching frequency and the transformer leakage inductance. Another good thing about this circuit is you can see they can achieve the, the bidirectional power flow by just changing the polarity of the phase shift angle. When the phase shift angle is a positive, the power flow from one side to, an, to another side. If we change the polarity of phase shift angle, then power goes the other direction. And also, this control is symmetrical, very simple. Okay, power electronics, basically, we don't want to invent a very complicated uh, uh, topology. That is not good. Industry does not like it. The simple, the better, because the reliability is also increased and also with a small number of the semiconductor device, the power density is also easy to uh, be increased. Well, uh, um, another very good advantage of this circuit is it can achieve the zero voltage switching to reduce the switching loss significantly 
by not adding any auxiliary circuit and control. Okay, how to achieve that? I'm going to show you later. Okay. However, although the topology is very uh, uh, simple and the control is simple as well, how to design a high frequency transformer to meet this high voltage requirement and also to reduce the, the copper loss and the call loss at this high switching frequency becomes a very challenging task. I have to say we have not uh, uh, find the best solution. We just have done some preliminary work and we needed to do more work here. And uh, this uh, is a prototype of our 50 kilohertz uh, planner transformer. And we also use that popular interleaving structure the trans, uh, interleave the transform winding uh, structure. Although you can see that the performance is uh, better than non-interleaved uh, winding uh, uh, arrangement, still the performance is not optimized. This is a magnetic field of strength. This is the current uh, density. It, this is not the uh, uh, best performance, just the better than the Let me quickly, okay, okay. Just better than non interleave the structure. And um, this is the power loss breakdown analysis. You can see a large portion of loss coming from the switching device conduction loss. And also an, uh, another large portion of loss coming from the transformer core loss and the copper loss. So to solve this problem, we can use that uh, wide band gap device, like uh, again, I'm trying again. Um, they have a much lower own resistance compared to MOSFET. And for this, we need to optimize the design, the winding structure, and uh, maybe some other solution. How to design the high power density and also high efficiency, the high frequency transformer in this converted topology is very, very hard topic. And uh, I just, uh, some, that's not many people, but uh, they even they write a proposal and uh, to tackle this, this is a very worthwhile topic. But we don't have a uh, good magnetic uh, um, expertise in my group and uh, at the CAPS as well. So this is the uh, first research area I wanted to collaborate with some faculty if possible. Okay, so. What is power electronics? Power electronics is first analyze the circuit, and then uh, we build the uh, prototype to verify uh, if this uh, uh, efficiency is high and the power density meet our requirements. So, okay, we see that the experimental uh, measured efficiency uh, efficiency is 97. It's pretty good. However, we also find out the problem. Okay, so at the light load, the efficiency is lower because of the large switching loss due to the, we lose uh, zero voltage switching. And for the heavy loads, and uh, we also have lower efficiency because the large additional conduction loss due to the large circulating energy. Okay, and um, why we lose zero voltage switching at the light load? I first need to show you how we achieve zero voltage switching. Um, as I have mentioned, it is very, very simple uh, for this uh, topology. Say if we use S1 and S2 as one example. Before T2, before T2, S1 is on and S2 is off. Then we turn off S1. So the capacitor of S2 discharged and this capacitor charged by the transformer current. Okay, when the voltage of S2 become negative, the diode is on. When the diode is on, then you can turn on S2. This we call the zero voltage turn on of uh, a switch. In that case, we can just uh, reduce the switching loss significantly. So to meet the ZVS condition, we have to make the EL, which is inductive energy. 
is larger than the ETH, which is the sum of output capacity energy of S1 and S2. So this energy can be dumped, fully dumped, and so the diode can be turned on. But at light load, this current is small. So this condition is no longer meet. Okay, and why heavy load we have uh, um, larger circulating energy loss? Because we use a phase shift angle to transfer the power from one side to the other side. So there must be some time in one switching cycle the power delivered to the other side is zero. This is, caused, this is an inherent problem caused by this topology. And we can calculate this uh, circulating energy is two times of EL and also related to the phase shift angle. So we're trying to improve efficiency at the light load and the heavy load. Let's see if it's possible or not. For uh, light load, if we want to maintain ZVS switching, we want the larger EC, the better. And at the heavy load, we want the smaller EC is better. If we convert this, translate this into another language, at the uh, light load, we want a larger phase shift angle. And at the heavy load, we want a smaller phase shift angle. See, you see, that is impossible. Because if we, uh, phase shift angle is the only control variable, we plot the phase shift angle in terms of power. You, you just see the totally just the opposite way. At the uh, light load, the small phase shift angle, and then phase shift angle increase. So what are we going to do? We want to uh, introduce another control variable. So in this case, we let the transformer leakage inductance to be another control variable. Let it to actually this idea uh, come from my student, and uh, he's very uh, smart guy, and um, he also have some knowledge in magnetic design, and he said this is uh, adaptive. He already graduated um, because some part of this work. Um, he said that there's a, uh, this is a common method used in uh, some other application, and uh, uh, called, uh, but he gave it the name as an uh, adaptive inductor. So it can change the inductance. It can change inductance by the bias current. In our case, is the uh, DC output current. So. Actually, the principle is very simple, but you see the effect. If we bring in the leakage inductance as another control variable, at the light load, the phase shift angle increased, you see, from the small to this. And at a, a, a heavy load, the phase shift angle also decreased. Okay, and uh, we, okay, then we summarize. The advantages by uh, introducing this adaptive inductor is we will gain smaller current stress and optimize the circulating energy and extend the zero voltage switching operating uh, at the light load and reduce the conduction loss at the heavy load and therefore extend the range of high efficiency. This is very important for solid state transformer because the load variation range is big. We need to maintain high efficiency. Again, even the solid state transformer is very popular, but for industry to accept this, there's a long way to go. And efficiency is one issue, and the life cycle, uh, lifetime is uh, another issue, and the reliability. Um, but uh, all the say, ONR, DOE, and um, NSF, they put a lot of money, and uh, here trying to push that direction. Okay, here we build a new prototype using adaptive inductor. This slide just showed that we don't have any size or power density penalty. Okay, 
And uh, you can see uh, at the light load, we have uh, achieved the ZVS, but uh, without adaptive inductor, is hard switching. And uh, at heavy load, the phase shift angle is smaller than the one without using adaptive inductor. And finally, it's the efficiency curve. At light load, 4.8%. Heavy load is 1.4%. So we talk about the how to develop technology to improve the efficiency and the power density. Another design aspect in solid state transformer, also in power electronics, is control. But when we talk about the control, it's not at the same level your control guys uh, talk. And in our project, the control goals is to control the uh, to achieve the input voltage sharing and output current sharing because this is modular structure. So we, we basically want the input voltage of each module to be the same and also output the current of each module to be the same. And also this control needed to make the system uh, stable. In order to design, control, and also analyze the system stability, we have to derive the uh, mathematical model for this uh, converter. Here shows the large signal average model. You can see it has two inputs. Um, it has two current sources. One is on the input port, the other is on the output port. And the output current does not depend on the output voltage. And also the input current does not depend on the input voltage. This is totally, totally different from all the other topologies. So this is, uh, uh, this uniqueness brings some problems and also brings some benefits. What's the problem? Problem is the common duty ratio control that uh, works for the, all the other topologies cannot apply in this topology. Common duty ratio control is basically you let all the modules controlled by the uh, um, common control variable, in our case, phase shift angle. Say, for example, if module one is 90 microhenry and module two is 88 microhenry, so the GM1 will be smaller than GM2, so I1 will be smaller than I2. So when I1 is smaller, we have the same input current. So IC1 is larger than IC2. So V1 increase. V1 uh, will be larger than V2. V, uh, V1 increase. For the other topologies, when V1 increase, I1 is also increase. But in our topology, I1 is independent of V1. So I1 will not increase. So this voltage will continue to increase. The system become unstable. So we have to find, the, find out a new control strategy to tackle this configuration. The control goal is input voltage, input voltage and output uh, current. And also, there's another uh, uh, goal, number three. We also need to control the output voltage uh, when we have the dynamic load change. We need to keep the output voltage to be constant. Well, a nice thing about this is, see, if we control the input voltage to be balanced, which means the GM1, the GM of each uh, module should be the same, and the, then the output current to be controlled automatically, but not vice versa. If we control output current to be balanced, we do not control the input voltage, the system becomes unstable. The main reason still is that when the input voltage increase and this current does not affect this current, there's no self-correcting mechanism of our DHB converter. So this is our proposed control structure. It is, again, very simple. We have two voltage loop cascaded. The outer loop is for the input voltage, so we can also achieve output current sharing. And the inner loop is the voltage loop for output voltage regulation. There are some other ways. 
there are some other methods for this topology to control the input voltage and output voltage. But we think this method is the best when you consider the modular structure. So in this way, each module control is identical, is totally identical. So we can achieve the plug and play capability. For other control, they may have uh, uh, better dynamics performance, and uh, but uh, from this modular structure, this one is what we are looking at. So we call this identically uh, distributed control. Um, we are still struggling this. Um, say centralize the control, decentralize the control, and distribute the control. Um, they have different, uh, uh, um, uh, and distributed the control is also become very hard. We just uh, take that uh, concept that you use on our modular configuration. This uh, simulation result shows our proposed control can achieve our goal, and uh, we also uh, need to build the uh, uh, three module in the uh, lab and with different uh, transformer leakage inductance. So we made it uh, not a symmetrical on purpose. So the experimental results can achieve the input voltage balance and output current sharing uh, consistent with our simulation results. And uh, this is for the steady state performance. Uh, well, we can do a lot of things. Um, for the solid state transformer, we uh, use the dual hard bridge topology. And this dual hard bridge topology can be easily extended to dual active bridge and uh, three phase uh, DAB or multi phase DAB for different applications. The operation principle is similar but uh, with a little bit uh, uh, difference. Say, for example, here we only have one operation mode say output power equation uh, is determined by the phase shift angle and uh, 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 other things. And here we have two operation modes. Okay. And that topology can also modify a little bit, become uh, from the voltage fed, they can become current fed. Okay, and then we have current fed dual hard bridge and current fed dual active bridge and current fed uh, multi phase uh, DAB. Well, current fed uh, DC to DC converter has some special benefits or advantages when we interface with a PV or ultra capacitor uh, or even fuel cell. The reason is why it is suitable for lower voltage input with wide voltage variation of range, and uh, uh, it also can provide a small the current uh, ripple. Well, the main reason why we can do that is we have two control variables, the duty cycle control and the uh, uh, phase shift angle control. But the problem is that the operation becomes much more complicated compared to voltage fed. Voltage fed is very simple, right? But the application is also simple. The input voltage is 12 k, uh, uh, kilowatt, is uh, um, 12 kV, is always constant. You don't need to consider that. And also, the, uh, we, the only change is the dynamic load change. That is for the uh, solid state transform application. But for the current fed, PV, there's a large voltage variation, 50%. Ultra capacitor is also 50% voltage variation range. And um, here I just want to use one example to show you, well, which application we use the current fed converter and instead of voltage fed converter. This three port uh, DC to DC converter also becomes very popular. Firstly, it can integrate the PV and the battery storage. Traditional way, you have to use uh, multiple individual converter. Multiple converter basically use one converter. You use one converter to have a function as a two converter or three converter to reduce the cost to improve uh, power density. But only current fed converter can reach that goal. This just they show one example: the energy storage, uh, say battery is connected to the DC link, and uh, uh, the energy 
source with large voltage variation is connected to the current fed. The PV is connected to this port. Well, you can also apply the exactly same topology to the fuel cell and ultra capacitor because you connect the fuel cell here and connect the ultra capacitor here. Fuel cell has very slow dynamics. So if we have a fuel cell vehicle, you need ultra capacitor to provide the peak power during the startup and also to absorb the um, regenerative or braking energy when you decelerate the vehicle. You can also apply the same topology to the battery vehicle. You can connect the, uh, a battery here and ultra capacitor here, the same thing. And uh, a battery provides the average power because it is a high energy density device and ultra cab is the uh, high power density device. They can handle the uh, peak power during the acceleration and uh, absorb regenerative energy. I'm not going to go through the technical details. I just want to show the operation principle is quite different for the voltage type. Uh, three phase application, only two uh, operation mode, but for the current fed, it's a six operation mode because we have one actual uh, control variable duty cycle. And you can see the output uh, power equation becomes complicated, it's different uh, in each uh, sub area. And also, the zero voltage switching condition becomes complicated. For the voltage fed, it's only related to the uh, transformer current. Now it's related to the DC uh, inductor current as well, and transformer current. And also, if you connect the battery as a DC link, connect to the DC link, this battery charge discharge, it also has voltage variation. That also affects uh, ZVS. So we derive this equation. I'm not going to go through the, I think no one is interested to know the uh, details. And also, the ZVS is related to power flow mode at all, also. So we just uh, uh, come up with the five operation modes, okay? For each operation mode, we analyze the ZVS, okay? And then finally give the uh, ZVS boundary and did you analyze uh, each operation mode is in the soft switching range or not. Okay, this is... Uh, I'm, I'm going to skip all this. And also you need to compare why other uh, topology cannot uh, do it, uh, this topology can do it. Um, control, I just want to say a little bit. The multipoles are converted and uh, get some advantage uh, from the uh, uh, topology point of view. Okay, use one converter to serve as the uh, two converter or three converter. But the problem is what? The problem is it will suffer in the control. The control will become complicated and the control variable may uh, coupled to each other and all these things. So this is what um, our students did and uh, trying to decouple them or we have some papers on that. So I just skip, okay. Uh, and we build the prototype. Another thing I want to talk about is packaging. Packaging. So again, we don't have expertise in packaging as well. The students do the just the uh, regular work. What we can think about, we put a three-phase uh, uh, inductor on top of the three-phase the transformer, and uh, to reduce the size. And this is our test bag. This converter. This uh, PV panel. We use the uh, PV emulator and uh, uh, the battery. Okay, and the, the nice thing is about the, we get the uh, experimental results uh, during one day, of course, in a downscaled uh, time uh, frame, and uh, uh, compared with simulation results, um, is uh, consistent with each other. Okay, another project uh, we just finished is to uh, build a three megawatt PV converter grid tie uh, using silicon carbide uh, device. Again, we also use that uh, current fat, DC to DC converter topology, and uh, with the H-bridge inverter. We also use the modular structure. And the control, again, the control uh, is uh, um, kind of complicated. We do find some thing to tackle the control. 
the two phase, uh, two control variable duty cycle and uh, uh, phase shift angle because for the PV application we have to meet the MPPD. We first need to uh, achieve MPPD and second we also need to control the power from PV to the load side. And another thing we even add another control objective for the single phase application we can reduce the size of DC link capacitor significantly by introduce, introducing some control algorithm just uh, for that. The details I'm going to skip and this is how well we build for the DC to DC conversion stage and the DC to AC conversion stage and uh, we put them together and this is our control board is DSP plus FPGA, uh, universal controller board. And actually this is customer designed. Uh, we have a, a poster from Korea and uh, he helped us to build this. This just to show why we choose silicon carbide de uh, device can improve the efficiency. We have another project say, PV microinverter using GAN device to increase the efficiency. And we also use the quasi -Z source uh, uh, topology. This is uh, topology especially fit for high frequency operation. And you can see uh, the peak efficiency is 98.6%. This is much higher than the, all the commercial available PV uh, converter, micro converter because we use scan device and also we can achieve this efficiency at 100 kilo uh, hertz. Usually the highest switching frequency is you suffer the uh, uh, more switching loss. And here we just use a pure hot switching. This just showed the advantage of that uh, new semiconductor device can bring to a power electronic circuit. And this is our hardware uh, in the lab. We do not uh, build the three megawatt uh, uh, prototype. We use downscaled 5 kilowatts. Uh, 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 and uh, here, this may be something you are interested in. Um, distributed energy storage system for voltage rise mitigation. Um, basically, if we have large penetration of PV, that will affect the uh, voltage. So in that way, we just uh, uh, apply the distributed energy storage to work with uh, PV together. So we can control those energy storage first to regulate the voltage before we can control that uh, traditional voltage regulation device like a tap change transformer and SVC. The control does nothing uh, fancy. That's a very simple control. But uh, yeah same location and we use this uh, a very popular that GE model this, uh, as a benchmark and uh, the, the control is not uh, uh, it's, there's not many new things on the control very simple but the, what I'm trying to show you guys here is our uh, RTDS based um, simulation can verify our proposed control so here the DC distribution system is modeled in RTDS and they, they have the several bus and for the say for example the bus 205 we can send out the bus voltage out to control the power amplifier here to control a power amplifier to uh, emulate a controllable AC voltage source and then this connected to the uh, smart meter and for the bus 205 the energy storage element is implemented in hardware with our uh, available uh, 22 kilowatt hour energy storage system. And also the store, uh, state of charge controller for this energy storage and also for coordinator controller is also implemented in hardware. And they can communicate, for, especially for the coordinate uh, controller. They can communicate with the rest of state of charge controller and the tap change transformer controller through the communication, the DMP3. Uh, 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 um, so this we call the power hardware in the loop uh, uh, testing environment, or CHIO, the controller. 
uh, hardware in the loop simulation. So this, for the bus 205, this hardware can be integrated with the rest of the large system. This project that we worked with uh, is c uh, collaboration and uh, uh, between my group and the communication uh, uh, faculty in our department because for this, okay. and we go one step further. For that uh, uh, distributed energy storage with PV, we want to uh, um, find out how to develop the economic analysis for that energy storage, and then how to optimize the size design of the BSS for that purpose. So actually, this is a, a, a student from Austria. He's a visiting student. He first come up with this idea, then other students refined this. Uh, I like this work very much. And um, basically, we developed the methodology and um, we use the distribution power system model to take the input, including the annual load profile, PV profile, and the temperature profile. And um, let me see if I get all the information here. This system model can provide the bus voltage to the EMS, the energy management system control. And they will decide when we can charge the battery and the, the, when the uh, battery is discharged. And it also, I think this is running battery, and also that the distribution positive model can generate the peak power and the load shifting and all those information and uh, send this to a second, uh, uh, we call a second subsystem to calculate, to calculate the benefits of shaved peaking power generation and uh, uh, benefits gained uh, by load shifting and benefits gained by the uh, release, the OLTC and this are uh, the voltage regulation device, the work stress. And also the battery, we have another block called the battery model. Battery model receive the command from EMS when it is uh, charged, when it's uh, charged it can calculate the lifetime. And the output of that block, the lifetime goes into the uh, cost ca uh, calculation. So we can find out the BESS, the battery energy uh, storage system, the cost, okay? Based on this methodology, what do we are going, this is a battery model, I'm going to skip that. Okay. <laughs> this are the equation. I do not put all the details here. Um, again, my students uh, come up with this uh, equation. They can calculate the loss. Say, PV system, if you install, if you install the uh, uh, um, battery storage, you can calculate the levelized um, installation cost. And then minus the benefits we get from peak power shave, uh, 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 shaving and the load shifting and uh, on the re reduced voltage regulation device uh, stress, then whoops, well, that is most important the thing, uh, the last slide. So basically, we calculated the, we can uh, define the, or derive the battery size, which size we uh, get the best economic uh, benefits. Our research find out if we use a lithium ion battery for that system, for the GE distribution system model, you cannot uh, gain economic benefits at all. Um, but you can find out, say, 2.5 peak power loads uh, the, if you design a battery based on the 2.5 uh, peak loads for the bus 205. That uh, will cost is minimum. And for each bus, the uh, load the power is different, so the battery size is different. And we can also compile the, these um, these are one battery with lead acid battery. If we don't use this advanced battery, or if we use different uh, battery, so what is the cost? And um, 
we have one more, we extend the work to another level. This is for the distributed energy storage. How about the PV farm? If we have a PV farm, and we also have that uh, 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 energy storage, uh, centralized energy storage, not a distributed. In that case, like Hawaii, they have that demonstration uh, uh, site. And why we want to do this work is because when all our program manager come to visit our uh, lab facility, and I show her and all my, uh, say, fancy work, uh, the hardware, all those things, and she's not interested. And when I just uh, show her the, the one post, uh, poster about this distributed energy storage size, uh, and I said, she became very interested. She said, oh, well, the, because that Hawaii that demonstration is also a DOE and ONR, they work together. They said, if you can come up with a method that you uh, find out for that application, say, uh, PV farm, Say, uh, say one megawatt or two megawatt in that air, uh, uh, range, and uh, how to def define the size of the battery to get the minimum cost. That we are very interested. Oh, so we got an encouragement. We just work on that. When we give the results, uh, they say, "Oh, this result is good." But sorry, we don't have funding to support this one. But again, I like that uh, uh, topic uh, very much. So the uh, students continue to work, but that's still that's some uh, issues there is not uh, uh, done yet. Okay, I think that is uh, pretty much uh, the end of my presentation today. And then thank you very much for everyone to come here. I know this is very hard in the summer semester and you have more fun stuff to do instead of coming to this boring presentation. But this is starting point for UF and FSU to know better what, uh, what's going on there and to form a more close relation, collaboration in the future. Thank you very much. Because you might have to run out, but uh, any questions? Uh, yeah, any questions? I forgot that uh, the important part. What is? There's a lot of tremendous future. Actually, that is most of our funding coming from, really. And um, one is when we talk about the uh, uh, smart grid application, that the nano grid uh, um, is a building block of the smart grid. But the solid state transformer play a key role to connect the nano grid and uh, to the. Um, to form a large microgrid, so it can coordinate the nanogrid operation. And also for the utility operator, if they want to, say, optimize this, uh, the operation in a system level, they have to do this through the SST. And also in the electric ship, that is a small scale power system. They want to use a solid state transformer. It's not only because all the other advantages. Another very important aspect is with solid state transformer, they may be able to achieve brakeless operation. One bad thing about the DC grid is it's very hard to interrupt the DC current. So to how to achieve a brakeless DC grid and this has to through a solid state transformer. The solid state transformer is the interface, is the interface with the say nano grid with a higher system structure. It has to be uh, 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 there. Um, well, the solid state transformer also they want to apply the uh, the wide band gap device into it. So to improve the efficiency, but how to achieve that goal? There's a lot of people working on that. I, as a power electronics guy, solid state transformer is definitely is one of the most promising uh, uh, area that uh, we are going to put a lot of uh, efforts on. But again, to solve a lot of issues uh, on the solid state transformer, there's a lot of different angle, and 
much. So for example, me, I only focus on the maybe uh, power efficiency and the power density and the reliability. But um, a lot of power system guys also now to study, say, if we have a grid have, a, say, multiple SST, how they interact with each other. And also for one um, SST with a, a different uh, nano grid, how that affect the system dynamics. There's a lot of things can work on. So that's why I choose my title as the uh, uh, media voltage. It is closely related to the media voltage DC and um, say DC distribution system. And also, I'm not going to talk about the say, say solid state transformer. It has three conversion stage, right? The output is AC. If we still have AC nanogrid or AC distribution system, but if we have DC, we can definitely get rid of the uh, the third stage. Only just keep the AC to DC and the DC to DC. So it works for both. Uh, and uh, what else? There's uh, many things going on. Oh, oh, for sure, wind power harvesting, okay? And um, it's basically the, uh, a similar thing, and the grid tie, and the, uh, it collects the uh, uh, um, wind power, and also connected to the grid. You can connect it to the DC distribution, HVDC, and the output can uh, connect it to there. And another application of media voltage, DC to DC converter, is the uh, uh, ocean energy, ocean wave energy. It's like uh, like a wind is uh, in the air and ocean and uh, wave energy harvesting is uh, uh, more uh, uh, in it and uh, for the, but uh, in order to get this power and uh, send them to the grid, it's the same thing. Yes, I'm the. Yes, yes. And for that, the uh, distributed energy storage with the PV that is part of my Sangri uh, work. In the last year, I mean, we we will have the last year, right? And uh, we are going to work on the cost analysis. This is uh, my part. Okay. Thank you. So you are. I'm Jana Bolavani. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, so I never uh, get a chance to meet you uh, face uh, in face. Uh, That's why I came to meet you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you have uh, it's very easy to find my information from the website and welcome you guys to contact me to discuss any questions. Yeah. I'm going to show my daughter. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about the batteries. I should have put fresh ones in, but No no, I think it's totally fine. Yeah, it's actually talking on. Yeah, I think I may just uh, leave it on for such a long time. Maybe, so maybe. I need to refresh it. I haven't it. used it in a, in a month or so, so okay. probably the batteries ran down. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed it.